here with one of the bands that I like, Emery. We're here with Devin. And you guys just released one of the best records, I gotta say, of the year, I'm Only Thank a Man. You. you put it out in two versions, a uh, special edition and a standardized. What was the purpose in doing that? Well, we just thought uh, a lot of times, you know, people like to see what goes on behind the scenes, like uh, as far as in the studio and stuff like that. So we made a bunch of just kind of goofy things from the studio. And, and also live footage is always a plus for people. And so we just filmed a couple shows, one acoustic, one uh, just regular show. And uh, we just thought it'd be cool to have it as an extra feature on the special edition. I gotta say, as a fan, I, I enjoyed it, especially the blowouts. And we, oh. got, <laughs> we got questions about that. Has there been any blowouts on this tour so far? Not yet. We, unfortunately, we haven't, I don't know, I don't think we've been around too many McDonald's as far as during the day yeah. and uh, after shows. And so we usually just get like a pizza or something like that. But there'll be a blowout. <laughs> I swore, though, uh, when I, after the studio that I was never going to do a blowout again. But... I'll probably give in and do another blowout. That's awesome. Um, I gotta say, your DVDs are really inspirational because most bands will put out the, fi you know, the fighting, all the bad stuff. You guys really represent what a band should be. Like, Thank there's you. a lot of positive in it. Um, do you guys ever know, like, when you guys film it, how many cuts do you guys go through, or do you have any say how the actual DVDs come out for like the um, question? Well, basically, a friend of ours. Did the, like our documentary and our DVD for the uh, I'm Only a Man, and uh, you know he sends us rough edits of it and says you know do you guys like this or do you want more of something else in it and we basically you know say can we get more of this or that but um, for the most part he's good at what he does and we trust him and if there is something that we don't like we'll definitely tell him we're not afraid to do that so um, but yeah I mean we have control in a sense but we're not so controlling that we care that much we trust the people that do it for us so. And another question fans are wanting really to know, since you guys have done a lot of acoustic tracks, probably in 08, our fans are wanting to know, are you guys going to do acoustic shows throughout the country? Um, well, we did an acoustic, like a short acoustic tour this summer, yeah. you know, and um, and people seem to like it. I mean, m mainly just our, our really strong fans, you know, that, that want to see us more intimately, they come out. Um, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen. We would like to record some acoustic songs, maybe like... You know, an acoustic EP or something like that, where people can and and just write songs for that acoustic album. And uh, well, I I don't know what's exactly going to happen yet, but we always are thinking about stuff like that and trying to get some different things out there for for people. I know as a fan, I'm looking forward to when it happens and well, I can attend one hopefully. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, downloading has become a big problem in the industry, but I'm seeing your fans. You know, they might download it, but they're actually going out and buying it. Yeah. How do you feel about the RAA going after the fans nowadays instead of like my not MySpace but the torrent sites and the MP3 sites, but they're going after the individuals now? Right. Um, I don't. I don't know if the downloading can really be avoided. I think it's like something that's probably going to have to be just almost tolerated. And I hope. I feel like a lot of people that we've talked to and met recently are like kind of gaining a little more respect for bands and the fact that you know they're like well we know they're out there working hard and so we want to kind of buy their CD um, I know honestly I've obviously downloaded CDs and I've obviously got CDs from other people without buying them from the you know from the store but and and sometimes I do feel kind of bad about it because I'm in a band I'm trying to You're make trying this my career and so I try to avoid it whenever I can but um, I know it's something that's kind of inevitable I feel like and so we just kind of feel like you know we want our fans to hear our music more than anything and support our band and if that's if if they need to download the music to do that and that's okay with us and as long as they you know try and come out to our shows and you know support us in any way they can otherwise that's it's okay too i mean we'd rather than buy our cd yeah but, i mean you know the, the the special edition i keep wanting to say deluxe but yeah the special edition is definitely worth a buy if you guys haven't picked it up i know a lot of retails have actually sold out of it oh, cool. up here in this area very cool is there any way those fans can get on it? Do you know, like, pretty much through Tooth and Nails website? Yeah, and saying? we have it on our website. Um, it's basically our website, emorymusic.com. You just go there, and I'm sure through MySpace as well. But uh, yeah, there's just a little thing you can click on the album, and it'll pop okay. up and say. You guys got it from the source. It's definitely worth a pickup for this year and leading into next year. Um, how's this tour been going with you guys with Chiotis, The Devil Wears Prada? Yeah, it's been it's been awesome. Like uh, we've toured with uh, Scary Kids before, um, 
but never Chiodos or Devil's Pr Devil Wears Prada. Um, Chiodos is a great band right now. You know they're they're hot and like a lot of kids like them, and, and so that's good for us because it's some new fans. And um, Devil Wears Prada is a new band and they're doing great. And so it's just a good tour. We feel like you know the bands not are too similar, but it's it's a it's a tour where it's um, attractive to kids to come out yeah. because if they like that style of music, then they want to come out and see you know three hours of that kind of music. But we're trying to set ourselves apart just a little bit by doing some different kinds of things at the shows. And but as far as crowds and and everything goes, it's just been one of the best tours we've been on for sure. Okay, this year's coming to an end sadly. So, <laughs> yeah. what what does Emory as band have? What do you guys have planned for OA? Well, um, we're gonna probably do a headlining tour in like uh, end of January and through February and part of March, and uh, you know we're still trying to figure out who we're gonna take on that and who will be you know the best support and everything's like that. So after that, you know we're just kind of open. Uh, last year we didn't do Warp Tour, we did a bunch of festivals, and so depending on if we get a slot, you know how it works out, we might do Warp Tour, um, you know different things like that. So it usually just plays out in the months to come, but I, we're even thinking that maybe. Depending on how everything goes next year, we might even start recording again, you know, like next fall or next winter. And wow. so, so <laughs> you know, it's better. A lot of times, it's better sooner than later. Yeah. We don't want to wait another two years for another album. So. Well, I know your touring schedule schedule is hectic, and I really do appreciate this. And I oh, no thank problem. you, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Very much.